Solid.js has enjoyed a lot of growth recently because it uses a really similar coding style to React whilst being faster than it as well because it does much more granular updates to the DOM than React does, which is really cool. So let's take a look at how they compare when we look at the code and let's see what differentiates them. All right, so let's start off by what app we are comparing. We've got this little app that has two or three buttons, basically. Each of these has labels, so B0, B1, and B2. They have a number of times it was clicked, and they also increase this number using an interval. And every time the number is dividable by five, it will fetch a new Pokemon from the Pokemon API and display its name here. And as you can see, if I click the button, then this will update as well. And also there is another attribute on this button that tells it whether it should render or not. And as you can see, B1 should not render. And if we take a look at the React side, then we see exactly the same. So let's take a look at how this is implemented. All right, so let's start with the app.jsx. Here we've got our little const that contains all our buttons. This will look exactly the same on both sides because it's just vanilla JavaScript. And as you can see, we got a title, our interval and our render. So basically we tell it, this is how often you should update by yourself. This is your title and this is whether or not you should render at all. Then down here on the solid side, we can already see a bit of a difference on what normal React would look like. Because here we don't map over the buttons array, but we actually use a for each as a component that takes in buttons. And then as a child, it basically uses a callback function that then renders stuff. And then again, to conditionally render stuff, we use a show component. So the condition is in this when prop, and we can also add a fallback that's optional if you wanted to display something else whenever the button does not render. And then of course, there's just the button that uses normal JSX, so it looks basically the same as in React. So let's compare this to the React app now. As you can see here, we don't need any additional components. We just do buttons.map and then if button render, then using this ternary expression to basically also add the fallback. And then again, the button looks exactly the same. So here we aren't seeing that many differences yet, I personally prefer this buttons.map and the turning expression logic, but I could just as easily get used to this right here. And yeah, it's a bit more expressive anyway. But now let's get to the interesting part, which is the button. So here we can already see a few differences. The most obvious, of course, being that we don't use a use state, but a create signal. And the cool thing about a signal is that it doesn't update the whole component when it changes. It only updates parts of the component that use it. So this component only runs initially. So this set interval right inside the component function is absolutely fine. Sure, it isn't getting cleaned up, but it doesn't run a lot of times like it would in React where every rerunner would create a new set interval. This only runs once and everything is fine. Then we've got this fetch Pokemon function right here. That's just vanilla JavaScript. It gets a random number, gets the Pokemon data from the Pokemon API for that Pokemon ID, and then basically sets Pokemon to Pokemon.name. That will look exactly the same on the React side as well, as you can see. But on the other hand, here we've got our use states and we need a use effect to reset this interval because if we don't, then we will set a new interval on every render, which we don't want to have. Now let's move a bit further. Here we can see our little next use effect. We have an async function inside this use effect that needs to call itself because a use effect function can't be async. And then it checks if the count that is in the dependency array is divisible by 10, then we await fetch Pokemon and set the new Pokemon. If we now compare this to solid, we either got this on mount if we want to do this only once, which we don't, so this is redundant, or we got this create effect, which is really similar to use effect, only that it accepts async functions, and we don't need a dependency array, because by using this count signal in here, we of course tell solid, I need this count, so it will automatically put it in a dependency array that's hidden away from us, which is really nice. On React side again, we needed this count and we need this extra function because use effect can't be async, which is a bit unfortunate. And then down here, we can see we just render a button and a small but important difference is count and Pokemon, which are our use signals, are functions and not just values. This is important because this function will actually change its return value when the signal changes. So this is just a bit of internal logic that needs to happen. So if you make this a function, you will be able to get an update to this specific bit of the component whenever the signal changes instead of a React world where the whole component needs to update. But then again, this is really similar to that whole logic as well. So you don't need to make as many changes as you might think, because yeah, adding two braces to Pokemon and to count doesn't change a whole lot of your code base anyway. So as you can see, Solid is really, really, really similar to React. The set count is basically exactly identical. These count and Pokemon things are identical except for the two braces. Create effect is basically a use effect. You can really easily transition from React to Solid if you want a bit of a performance boost, which is why it's so popular. 
So I think this is really cool. And if you're interested in more comparisons to React, then maybe check out this video where I compare React to Svelte, which is quite similar to Solid in the way how it updates things and how it's faster than React. But yeah, it's a different style of coding. So yeah, make sure to check it out and have a good day.